<sighs> Hello. Hey, Eric. I'll start letting the other participants in. Yeah, I just clicked on your name and it changed it to uh, panelist, not uh, co host. Can't hear you, Ellen. All right. Can you hear me now? Actually, I can't promote them to panelists. Yeah. Um, you have to make me co-host. Yeah, you were for I? a second and bumped you out. You're still muted. Huh. Can you hear me now? Chaos. Mm. Oh. Alan, try us talking again. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Okay. Um, we have to make the others panelists. I can't do that for some reason. Oh, now I can. Never mind. Oops. So I think we actually are recording at the moment. Yeah, record, we're recording just for everyone's information. Doesn't want to let me pause recording. We're up to a dozen people. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. This is Alan Snow, tree warden with the town of Amherst. We're going to be uh, holding a public shade tree hearing today for the proposed removal of public shade trees on the North Common uh, for a, um, let's see, what is it for? The uh, improvements, sidewalk improvements and access improvements on the North Common. Um, so I'm going to run a short PowerPoint presentation, um, after which time the Public Shade Tree Committee is going to open a meeting and they're going to discuss and ask questions around the, uh, the proposal to the tree warden. And at that point, they will also, when they're finished discussing, open it up to public comment. Um, we're going to try to limit the time to roughly uh, you know, no more than three minutes, preferably two minutes to a person. Uh, we hope to have this meeting over at six o'clock, which is when it's scheduled to end. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and begin the tree warden's presentation. Um, and bear with me because um, I'm doing this from an iPad <clears throat> and I need to figure out how to show the presentation while uh, talking to you, so. Please bear with me. Okay. Um, not sure what you're seeing. Let me know if you see a PowerPoint presentation. We see it. Okay. So in accordance with Master General Law Chapter 87, Section 3, Shade Trees Tree Warden is holding a public hearing on today, Tuesday, August 9th, 2022, 5 p.m. in a virtual hearing to discuss the removal of the North trees on North Common with accessibility and redesign by the town of Amherst. Of shade trees impacted by this project include the following shade trees uh, 50 inch nori maple, a 
15 inch nori maple and a 14 inch nori maple. Um, I can say that, you know, I was asked by the town to assess the health of the trees on the common uh, and then to identify trees that were the least healthy and that would be, you know, something that you refer to, you know, work uh, not to save, but work to save the healthier trees. So with that in mind, we began the design process with the healthy trees in mind. Um, the three trees that were identified and just mentioned um, are the least healthiest trees on the North Common and have the shortest life expectancy to them. So that's why they, they have been identified. Um, this is a, one of the, the trees, 14 inch Nori maple on the uh, west side of the North Common across from um, essentially the, the bid office uh, on South Pleasant Street. See the tip die back. Half the leader, half the tree was already removed several years ago. It was pruned out. Um, the other Nori maple, the 15 inch Nori maple is sort of on the corner of Spring Street parking lot and South Pleasant Street. Um, again, the, the, the crown is thinning, beginning to thin. Um, it's a very lopsided tree because it was growing away from uh, the larger trees in the, on the common. Um, so it was chosen as a tree that you know, looked like it already was in the process of uh, the very beginning phases of decline. So. And then the 50 inch Nori maple, which is everyone refers to as the Mary maple. Um, again, it is um, next to the 14 inch tree, probably the tree in worst health on the common. Um, the iconic tree, which has been sort of loved to death um, by all the attention we have given it over the years. Um, we see in the upper crown, there's a fair amount of you know, thinning going on. So the Mary Maple again, this is a 2016 December, a very light sleet storm was not really a heavy weather event by any stretch of the imagination, <clears throat> no wind or anything. Um, and that live branch, which had been live and green previous year failed. Uh, at that point in time, so. And that is the, the attachment point where the branch failed. So you can see there, this is a couple of years later, it's about two years later. Um, but uh, there's not a lot of healthy tissue growing around that. Um, there is some, but uh, it's, it's struggling to um, compartmentalize that wound. And then uh, the, right next to that, just to the left in this picture, just to the right of this um, branch cut um, was where the other branch failed. You can see the kind of jagged edge there of the failed branch. Um, so this cut branch was removed uh, many years ago, it was before 2011. Um, and there's very, very little kind of new callus tissue around it. Uh, decay is pretty extensive inside that, that branch. Closer up. Just a quick note on how trees respond to wounds so they do not heal like we do, they compartmentalize. So if there is an injury, the tree alters the cells of the wood chemically uh, to more decay resistant cells and um, does its best to wall off decay. If the tree is very healthy and growing well, um, it is a is much better chance of outcompeting the decay. So it puts on more healthy wood than decay consumes. Um, in my opinion, this tree is not at that stage where it is successfully compartmentalizing the decay that takes place. In it. Here's a picture of the crown upper crown of the central leader. Um, it actually, you know, looks better in July than it does right now in August. 
but uh, we've lost more green surface up there already. Um, but you know, I really shouldn't be able to see daylight through this particular leader of the tree. It should be a, a much thicker, healthier crown. Again, this was taken today from a distance, um, and the crown is very thin, uh, the upper crown on the main stem. And also to the left, um, there's another smaller leader that goes up that has lost significant leaf surface. It's a photo from 2018 that shows some, um, you know, liquid oozing out of the, the trunk uh, and freezing. Um, so there's a you know a decent sized cavity there that um, was pushing out water and then freezing. Um, then but just back to the another shot, kind of grainy up close picture of the decline in the upper crown. And there are mushrooms growing on the upper crown on the stem, the trunk wood. Um, there is decay in that main leader that's high up in the trunk. Um, it had been pruned about two years ago and had all the dead wood removed from it, um, large dead wood. Um, so Everything you see there now is dead with what's happened in the last two years. Um, another condition that impacts the tree is the soil compaction and the associated erosion that takes place on the slope uh, where the Mary Maple, Maple is located. Um, there's a lot of roots that have been eroded away and they're on the surface. Um, there's not a lot of organic matter in the soil. Uh, it's very mineral. Um, the soil is not very healthy. Um, so the tree is, uh, is struggling. And there's the Mary Maple in 2014, which um, was, I think, the last, I'm not sure about this, 14 or 15, around there somewhere, was when the bids started lighting the tree again, the, the large Mary Maple, but for a number of years, the little Mary Maple, which is what this is, was lit as the Mary Maple. That is my presentation. So we should be back to screen. Can everyone okay. see me? So, um... We'll open it up to the committee for any questions, and then we'll open it up to everyone for um, public comment. Bennett? Hey, Alan, thanks for that. That was super helpful. Um, I, the, um, maybe you can put it back up. I had a question about the, there was a couple of slides, but I think the one about compartmentalization that had pictures of rot, um, or what I, I guess you would call rot. Were those, just to understand, that was that's kind of the main part of the tree that, um, where the main leader comes down and all the main branches meet. And that's an, like a, an aerial kind of top down view of that meeting place. Is that what we're looking at? Correct. So that is the location where the main trunk comes up as a single trunk, trunk and then it splits off into multiple leaders um, and branches at that one point. Oh. So um, it's a crucial yeah. component, yeah. Uh, structural component of the tree. I hadn't seen that before. That was alarming. Thank you, that's it. Um, Julian, do you wanna just give a little report of what we're gonna do now? Sure, thank you. Um, so basically we just want everyone in the public <clears throat> who's watching this to know and understand the fact that we are an advisory body to the tree warden, Alan, um, and we, advise him of the decision we would like made on whatever tree is in question. In this situation, multiple residents have requested that it go beyond our control or Alan's control and go to the desk of Paul Bockelman, who is the town manager. And basically that means that we in this situation will be issuing a recommendation on these three trees, including the Mary Maple, and Alan will issue a separate recommendation, I believe, to the town manager. 
and then the town manager presented with those two pieces of information will make his decision based on whatever he would like to make his decision based on. He will take into account our committee's vote, but it will not be solely our committee's vote, to be very clear. Um, and he will also take into account some of your public comments um, and additional outside factors, including the plan, the town council, monetary issues, et cetera. Um, so that is our position today. We're here to hear your concerns. And then after that, we are here to consider uh, what everyone has said and make a final determination. If this tree was healthy, alive, standing, and there was no uh, proposal to do the work that is planned on the North Common, even if there was a proposal to do the work that is planned on the North Common and it, uh, this tree could survive that work and survive for years to come, I would undoubtedly, and I believe everybody on this call would undoubtedly say to save this tree and preserve this tree for upcoming generations. But unfortunately, we're in a situation where that's not the case in the, in the slideshow Alan mentioned, the tree is not in a healthy state at this point. Neither are any of the three trees proposed for removal. And we are gonna make our decision considering the fact that this is a valuable community space and a community tree. And also considering the scientific information that's been presented by Alan, who's the tree warden and the condition and health of this tree. We would undoubtedly want to save this tree if it was entirely healthy. And I'm sure many of us have differing viewpoints on this committee and uh, we will be discussing and debating that as well as hearing all of your perspectives. So I appreciate everyone who's come out tonight. I appreciate everyone who's about to offer a public comment. And I'd just like for everybody to keep that in mind before jumping to any assumptions about our committee, our work or Alan's work we want to inform you how the process goes, whether you like how the process goes or not, we want to inform you of it. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Helen, you want to um, speak? Oh, I had a question that um, I just wanted to ask, and I'm not sure if it is, if Alan can answer it. Uh, I'm not clear on what, um, impact if the tree is, if it's decided the tree is to stay for the next couple of years, dying a natural death, if you will, um, what impact that would have on the plans for the North Common? Would, would plans just be changed? And, and redesigned or scrapped or, you know, is it an either or situation? It's mm -hmm. a good question. Um, I don't know if I can really answer the question, you know, but I would say that the town has received the funding based on the proposal that was sent um, and they need to build, build that plan. Um, I'm sure they can do some small changes, but nothing drastic. Um, the, um, you know, the tree's not going to die a natural death. So it's a public shade tree in a very public area. People, you know, are underneath it every day, um, throughout the day, sometimes throughout the night. Um, sometimes there are hundreds of people gathered underneath that tree. Um, so, um, you know, it, it has some serious decay issues that are going to shorten its, its life expectancy. Um, you know, this, sure, there's, you know, extreme measures we could take uh, to keep it from becoming a risk tree or you know, very uh, strong, you know, pruning to remove a lot of the weight on the branches and reduce its crown, uh, fence it off, keep away from walking underneath of it. Um, but it, it really is, as far as the health of all the trees go, it is just towards the end of its um, life in that highly public location. 
in my opinion. Well, let's open it up to the public, if that's all right. Um, raise your hand, please, anybody who wants to speak, and then I will call on you. Um, when you get on, when you start speaking, please give your name and address, and then two minutes. Um, Julian is going to time us. We won't cut you off on that moment, but try to finish up as soon as your timer is up, if you haven't already. Okay, Sarah. I'll provide you a warning. Sarah, no, it's not allowing me to allow you to talk. Sarah, are you there? No? Um, I'm clicking the allow to talk, but nothing's happening. Oh, there she goes, okay. Hi, <laughs> my name is Sarah. Amherst is my hometown. I live in Longmeadow, Mass. Um, I have a question for Alan on the Mary Maple. Um, um, Sarah, what's it, your whole name, please? It's Sarah Articolo. Amherst is my hometown. I grew up loving the Mary Maple, and it's always been an important part of my childhood and when I came back to UMass to go to school. Um, my question is for Alan. Um, if you're taking down the Mary Maple, and I understand why, when would you be doing so? When would the tree probably be coming down? That's a great question. The, um, I would imagine that we probably do it this fall or early winter. Okay, so it wouldn't have another um, celebration on the North Common again, um, even with the mini maple, with the lighting, there wouldn't, this would, last year would have been the last year of any lighting or celebration for the town. Um, that's my understanding as far as like timeline goes on the tree mm -hmm. and the project. Um, I'm not the one who's going to make that decision ultimately, so. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you giving me more information on it. I was heartbroken to hear that it was mm -hmm. coming down. I know that the celebration of the Mary Maple started in 66 for the town, and I spent my childhood going through them and in college. So um, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you for, for coming to the hearing. Anybody else? Uh, I don't see any other hand raise, hands raised at the moment. Two participants. Oh, sorry, it's not showing up on my screen. Let me see if I can see that somewhere. Anyone else see who's raised their hand? Yes, uh, Britt, Crow Miller, and Adrian have both raised their okay, hands. Okay, uh, Britt, I'm going to allow you to speak. Britt, are you there? Hmm. I keep seeing her, her screen pop up and then she disappears. So uh, clicking allowed to talk, but nothing happens. Huh. I think there's a lag time when someone is allowed to talk, at least when I was promoted as a panelist, it, it like logged me out and logged me back in. So that might be what's happening. There, there might be a Zoom lag between. So click once and let her stay there for a minute. I'll try Adrian. Meanwhile, see if one of those works. Okay, Adrian, Hello? you can you, you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I am one of the people who would very much like our. Mary Maple to remain in our midst because to me it is an icon at the center of our community. Excuse and, me, Adrian, can you say your whole name and address? Please? Oh, sorry, Adrian Stair. I live in Lessie Street in Amherst, 22 Lessie Street. Um, I think it's an icon. I think it has been with us and the up again, down again history. I think it has been breathing with us and through our celebrations and crises. And we have named it and needed it and loved it. 
I know it is nearing the end of its life, but there are ways to prolong the life of a truly great tree that has a lot of meaning in our community. And a lot of people will be expressing that too. Um, I think that it, it could be a rallying point and a focal point for our common and for our town so we can regroup after the pandemic and reclaim and redevelop our unique identity here in the valley. And um, we need such an icon. And trees, people, trees work with people on a totally unconscious way unless you happen to really want to sit under it because it's too hot to sit out in the, in the sun. Um, but I think we have named it and we've loved it. And um, I'm hoping that we realize that it is, it is the perfect candidate for um, focusing Amherst on what we have been and what we can become. Uh, I know the, the, that the measures to keep it alive will be extreme, but I know that they are also possible. So thank you for hearing, hearing me out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's try Britt again, Britt Crow Miller. Can anyone hear? Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Name and address first, yeah. please. Um, my name is Britt Crow Miller. I live at 57 Woodside Ave in Amherst. Um, I am on the faculty of the Department of Environmental Conservation at UMass. Um, so, I'll, you know, thank you for the presentation, Alan. I have a couple of comments that I've been thinking about and, um, you know, I'm speaking primarily to the, the 50 inch Norway, not the 14 or 15 inch. Um, you know, I realize it's, it's reaching the end of its lifespan, it's declining. Um, and it, it does feel a little bit like telling a parent or a grandparent, you know, hey, look, you're in your 70s, you're in your 80s, you've got arthritis, you're on the decline. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a pain to put the energy into taking care of you. So we've just decided to pull the plug. Um, and, um, you know, Alan said there are some more extreme measures that can be taken to prevent this tree from becoming a public risk. Uh, and I, I really think short of fencing it off, um, you know, when that point is reached, it, it would be a different conversation in my mind, but short of fencing it off, I, I do think those measures should be taken um, to preserve this tree for the community uh, for as long as possible. So maybe it's only two more years, maybe it's five years. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, given the history of this tree and the meaning of this tree in the community, it's, it's worth it. Um, you know, as my, my seven-year-old put it, um, just because the tree is old and a little bit sick doesn't mean they should cut it down. Maybe it's not supposed to live here, right? Speaking to the fact that it's not a native tree, but it still gives shade and oxygen to the air. It's part of our town. Um, and, and this point hasn't, come up in the conversation today, but you know, it is a non-native species. It's considered an invasive species. Um, but I wanted to point out that pretty much all of our ecosystems at this point are novel ecosystems or human engineered ecosystems, you know, whether we like that or not. Um, and so Norway maples have been here for more than 300 years. And so it, it, has in the past hearing, you know, people in the town talk about cutting the tree down because it's in Norway, it's felt a little bit like an excuse um, to kind of validate the cutting of the tree um, to move forward with, with this project. Um, and I wanted to point out also that Norways were originally planted for their shade benefit. Um, they are in some ways, you know, a healthy Norway at least, or a, a peak health Norway would be the shade tree, right? This is the public shade tree committee. Um, and so if we're making um, decisions about trees based on their ability to positively contribute to the civic life and public spaces in our town, um, a vote to cut this tree down, you know, unless it is an immediate safety risk would in my mind undermine, you know, the purpose and legitimacy of a committee called the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee. 
So um, those are my thoughts on this and thank you for the opportunity to share them. Thank you, Britt. Does anybody want to respond to that? Or I'd like to respond to it. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, obviously, you know, we're not taking them because it's nowhere maple, though it is sort of a, a notch um, on the list of reasons why you might want to take a tree down. Um, but you know, you know, nor maple here stay. We're never going to get rid of them. Um, they do provide dense shade. They do provide massive seed. Uh, they do leaf out before the other native trees, and they hold on to the leaves longer. And that's why they are they're they've been so successful. Um, but uh, you know the only reason we would take down a allowed to be taken down a, a uh, healthy public shade tree um, is because it was going to preserve uh, provide some benefit to the community overall and the tree that is at the end of its life expectancy um, is go potentially going to come down to allow another project to be built uh, so that future generations will have a nice space to live in, um, to, you know, to uh, enjoy. Um, we are going to increase the green space on the common uh, in this project. So I don't, I don't see how we could do the project without cutting the Mary Maple down. So it's not like we can, we can go ahead and do the project and, and leave the Mary Maple standing. It's, there's no way uh, that much of cutting and filling to achieve the grades we need to make everything work, um, uh, the tree could survive. And that's why we chose the Mary Maple to be removed because it was not healthy. And the other large shade trees there are very healthy and with some extra care will be there for a lot longer. Um, whereas the Mary Maple doesn't really have that long to go. Um, so it's, it's a tough call. It's not an easy call. Um, but when you're trying to plan the urban forest for future generations, sometimes you just need to make that call and say it's time to restart. And it's a tough social, you know, kind of community uh, thing to do. Uh, but I appreciate your, your concern. Yeah, I'll just add that as a committee, we've agreed that we would not cut down healthy no way maples just because they're an invasive species. We're not planting new ones, but we're not cutting them down just for that reason. All right, I'm going to call on Sue Kelly next. There you go. Hi. Um, my big concern about the taking down of that tree. Your name and full name and address, please. Sorry. Sue Kelly, Columbia Drive. Um, I understand the trees are fine, and I agree that I cannot imagine all of that work being done and the tree remaining even as healthy as it is today. My concern is that it's an enormous shade provider for that whole area. And I'm thinking about global warming and the temperatures we have. It seems so, we're, so we can barely hear you keep fading in and out, like you're turning your head away from the microphone or something like that, or maybe I'm, it's just a connection. I'm not, yeah. maybe it's a connection. Okay. Um, but I would. I hope that there's some sort of shade going to be placed there to replace the shade that's going to be lost because I think that's one of the big things is it, with um, especially with this heat it makes it even more obvious um, that we need as much shade as we can get especially in those areas um, that people in the public want to be in so is there any shade, any other shade plans? And that's it. Yes, there are there's 13 trees are on the plans to be replanted uh, along the whole uh, new North Common uh, plan. So some of them are smaller trees, but there are large shade trees as well. Okay. 
I'll now call on Craig Allmiller. Craig is not allowed, not available because you're using an older version of Zoom. I will promote you to a panelist to speak and then you'll be able to speak. Okay, if you unmute and say your name and address and you can go ahead. You're on camera also for this little bit. Unmute, please. Craig, you're muted. There you go. Still muted. You're, you're I, mean, I can unmute. Cry. No, I can't unmute. I can only ask you to unmute. Should be a button on the bottom left. That'll say mute or unmute. Hello? There yes. You there you go. Go uh -huh. ahead. Just we can hear you. Um, please state your name, uh, full name, and then go ahead with your comment. Thanks for coming. Okay. My name is Craig R. Miller, and I live at 38 Kingman Road. And um, I guess my, what I would echo what Adrian and Britt said. And I would also like to add that I feel that, and I've provided you with written commentary about this. I feel that the process so far by which this decision was made is uh, not in keeping with the spirit of our public, uh, shade tree law that would invite public commentary before decisions are made um, regarding shade trees. Clearly the, the committee, I don't know to what degree the council, but clearly steps have been made for securing funding with a plan that cuts down the Mary Maple. And that presents the public with a very, I think, unfair either or situation of either we take the Mary Mabel down and we care for our future generations, or if we leave the Mary Mabel, then it'll just get sick and it will fall on somebody and die which has been the tenor of the presentation by this committee and of other council members, of council members. And um, I find that very dispiriting as I find uh, the removal of the tree dispiriting. In fact, it seems sort of of a piece. So I am requesting that in the spirit of transparency and community, keep the tree. The plan can wait. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Okay. All right, yes, thank you, Craig. Um, it didn't come to us, there were channels for speaking up about the plan beforehand, but it didn't come to us until now as a, something we could vote on and decide. The, right? council was res the town council was responsible for approving the funding for the North Common. Yeah. All right, um, Sue, I think I was permitting you to talk, but you didn't get to talk. Uh, so Sue Kelly, if you haven't talked already. I did speak, and um, you answered my question, oh, I think. Okay. My Great, question okay. was 13, you're gonna put in 13 trees. Will some of them be large shade canopy trees or will they be smaller ornamentals? I just answered that in the chat in the question and answer. Yep, I believe they'll you. mostly be um, large shade trees, with maybe a few ornamentals. Alan, do you want to add anything? There are a number of large trees, uh, and there's a number of small trees. So this it's a mix of trying to get uh, shade where we need it, and some maybe some color during the year, uh, and some other, you know, benefits, uh, fruit and things like that for uh, birds and insects, so it's a mix. Okay. Um, 
Is there anybody else? I don't see any other hands up at this point. Okay. Uh, Britt raised her hand again. Okay, sorry. Uh, there you go. I've allowed you to talk. I actually didn't realize that I had raised my hand again, but I was typing a comment in the chat. Um, I guess I just wanted to mention that, you know, it's been mentioned several times that the the new the plan for the new common or the, the revamp of the common is not compatible with the continued existence of the Mary Maple. But I wanted to point out that's because the plan was designed under the assumption that the tree would be removed. The, that didn't have to be the plan. There could have been a different plan, right? And so I, I didn't live here. I moved here in 2020, so I don't know what the public input process was for that. But, you know, it is hard to imagine, you know, it has been presented as kind of an either or, right? And it that didn't, it didn't have to be that way. So I just wanted to say. No, I, I completely understand how people feel that there hasn't been, you know, public comment, um, especially since it hasn't, it seems like it's this sudden thing that's suddenly happening. We, you know, we started with a with a um, master plan for the North Common. Um, over, I don't know, must have been five, six years ago, uh, and there were multiple public meetings and well attended public meetings that just to kind of ask people what what do people want to see on the North Common? You know, in this redesign, what do people want? And so they, you know took this, these meetings and uh, all the information and there was a consultant at the time who came up with a conceptual drawing of what it might look like uh, in the redesign. Um, and in that particular uh, design, the consultant did not really take into consideration any of the trees. It was a blank slate and everything was, everything would have had to been removed if we were tried to build that concept, um, that proposal. Um, you know, it wasn't designed with engineering drawings or anything like that. It was just really, it was just a conceptual drawing of what it could look like. Um, so the town uh, took on the challenge, uh, our engineering department, um, um, which just successfully designed Kennick Park. Um, and, you know, started from the very beginning with the idea of preserving trees. So, you know, nothing hit the paper until we said which trees stand the best chance of a long life on the North Carolina. And um, that's when the Nori Maple, uh, the Mary Maple was, you know, picked as a tree that, you know, probably would be removed. And we came up with several conceptual drawings. Um, and then over the years, because uh, this has been years, it's been going back and forth between DPW and uh, the, the town council, bouncing around, trying to get, you know, trying to get to what people wanted on the North Common. Um, so it has, there has been public comment all along at all these meetings, they're public meetings. Um, so our engineering department, um, has come up with this final plan uh, with the guidance of, you know, all the other sort of government agencies in, in town. It wasn't, it wasn't a simple decision made by one department. It was uh, interdepartmental and a lot of public comment, um, uh, which, you know, is a challenging process in itself to go through. Um, so, but, uh, we're here now, um, and it was not an easy process. A lot of tough choices uh, were made. So. Okay, well, since there are no other hands, I'm going to open it up for the committee to discuss, and we will uh, make a proposal and vote on that. Anybody want to start the process? Yes, Sarah. I'll just share that I've been thinking about this a lot, <laughs> especially over the last week since our site visit. And I 
I hear what people are saying about, it feels like it's a choice. It feels kind of forced. Um, like, and I, and I feel all of those things myself. I'm, I, I honestly kind of don't want to make a decision, um, because I feel like it's so fraught and, and I hate to see the Mary Maple come down. Um, so I, I, I really, I'm, I mean, I'm a resident of Amherst myself and I love the Mary Maple and I am, feel that I'm, we're all kind of put into um, a really hard position um, because at this point we are faced basically with a decision of it's the plans or it's the tree, right? Um, and maybe it didn't have to be that way and maybe that's a lesson to learn for next time, but that's certainly what we're finding ourselves having to vote on tonight and I, I'm finding it really hard to to have to make some sort of choice um the i find some um peace knowing that it's just a recommendation and that i'm not having to make the final decision myself um so i just wanted to to say that that this is is really difficult and i'm really happy to hear from everyone in the community who loves this tree um it's so nice to know that that people come out for their trees and love them as much as, as I do personally. So, so thank you. I have a question about that. Um, and probably Alan, you're probably the best person to answer this, but in my recollection, we were talking about like, this was a topic of discussion and I could be misremembering that happened before I even heard any news about the Northtown common plans, like the tree, the viability of the tree. Uh, and, you know, to Sarah's point, it does feel like we're in this, you know, Sophie's Choice moment it, where it's all these things that Craig Gaumiller also mentioned it in that way. Am I misremembering that? Would we be having this conversation anyway, if not for those plans? Yes. You know, it, it's, we're not far away. We're talking years um, where the decision has to be made to radically prune the tree to keep it. Um, or to take it down. Um, and the common project essentially is, is forcing the issue um, a little early. So mm -hmm. We're gonna have this conversation if the tree stays, we're gonna have it again. Um, yeah. Thank you. Julian. Uh, one question I have is just, do these type of radical prunings, have you seen a lot of success with them on town trees or what impact does it make if we were to go that route? Um, I, yeah, again, I don't, if we're going to build the project, which sounds like we are, um, I cannot foresee a way to do the work and have the trees life expectancy be extended in any way. Um, it, would, it would be shortened uh, even further. A radical pruning would just make it, you know, uh, less of a risk of failure. Um, uh, and we'd still be needing to come back and remove the tree. Likely within the next, 10 years, is that a fair cap to say? I'd say less than 10, probably okay. less than five based on the decay okay. that's taken place in the trunk of the tree. When I look at the plans, I feel like um, there's nothing like so major happening in that spot that something couldn't be done as like a phase later on after a full failure of the tree if we let it continue on for a little bit more time. I feel like it would probably be a good idea to have a phase in sort of thing so that like there's been since like the past five years, I would say there's been a lot of changes in town and it's, and it's upsetting for a lot of citizens and a lot of residents to um, have measured changes seems like that would be more respectful for 
our people. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we've actually discussed phasing of the project and, you know, in order to even, even just to make the path that runs through on an angle through the common, North Common now, even trying to make that ADA accessible um, is going to do, there's gonna be a fair amount of cutting and filling going on um, in the root zone, underneath the drip line and around the drip line of that tree. Um, there's just no way to work around it um, to achieve the basic basic things. And the um, in the design, if you um, have a copy of it handy, um, you'll see that where that central sort of round ovalish patio area is, the reason why that's there is because it allows you to have an area that flattens out for a while um, and takes up a lot of the slope. But that is right where the, the um, Mary Maple is. It's right on top of the current Mary Maple position. And then the other sidewalks that come up kind of from the corner, which was another big issue that everybody wanted fixed on the common was the, the um, Baltwoods Spring Street um, kind of desire line where it starts and heads up at an angle towards the flagpole. Um, that desire line there to, to try to make um, a path that is ADA accessible go there is extremely challenging. It, it has been uh, a lot of time has been spent trying to work on the, the grading there to accomplish it and minimize the impact on the trees. Um, so phasing would be challenging. Uh, I'm not the engineer, so I can't say, I'm not gonna say it can't be done. Um, but it definitely based on what I've learned in this process would be extremely challenging to, to phase uh, those parts. Mm -hmm. Just, just, yeah. okay. There's one question that I'm going to read, Alan, I want you to answer, and then I am going to make a proposal uh, for us to vote on. Um, it's from Carol uh, Rose Pulcher. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. She writes, having identified the tree as failing, what does this mean about the town's liability if somebody is hurt, limb falling on a child playing under the tree, for example? Mm. Yeah, I mean, as, as tree warden, you know, I'm responsible for making our trees, you know, I hate to use the word safe, but, you know, to reduce as much risk as possible from trees failing under normal weather conditions, <laughs> you know, so removing dead wood and, and identifying weak, weak, you know, branch unions and things like that in trees and, and mitigating that risk when possible. Um, so, um, you know, if, if I say the tree should come down um, because it's a risk, then I don't even need a tree here. Um, I can just take the tree down. Um, I, you know, as I've said at the site visit, I don't think we're at that stage yet, but we're very close. We're years away from, from needing to take that drastic action to reduce the crown um, and do, do other things to keep the tree uh, from becoming a risk an unacceptable risk to the public. Um, and trying to preserve the tree during construction and then invite more people to sit around underneath it is, is, uh, is not something I would want to take responsibility for. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bennett? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, have a th I have thought, like Sarah and like everybody else in this committee, I thought a lot about this um, and I've actually just got a few remarks. I can keep them under two minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. Um, so today I'm suggesting that we heed the council of our tree warden to accept that it's beyond re rehabilitation and I have six reasons for it. And again, I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, first of all, I believe in the professionalism of Alan Snow, who's been named a former tree warden of the year in Massachusetts. And in my experience in this committee has never been eager to cut down any tree, much less the maple tree that we call the Mary Maple. He has real expertise with trees and he says it's time and I believe him. The viability and safety of the maple tree have been under scrutiny well before any plans for the North Town Common. It may be tempting to reduce this discussion to cutting down the maple tree to make way for new plans for the North Town Common, but I think that's inaccurate. I would vote this way regardless of plans for the North Town Common. Third, 
the artificially constrained root structure rotting center, which I actually hadn't seen it like I did today uh, in Alan's presentation. Um, the obviously sick and failing main leader, the faulty cabling, and other indicators of continued poor health mean that this tree is in serious decline. Uh, number four, while this argument that removing the tree before its time is akin to euthanasia and humans who still have a lot of life and then pulls at my heartstrings truly, the difference is that this tree stands in one of the most heavily trafficked parts of town and could fall at any time, presenting a safety risk that cannot be compared to an aging human. The tree warden has advocated many times to let some trees out of the public way die on their own time because we're in no rush. In this case, I do think safety makes all the difference in this discussion. Number five, we have finite resources. I believe the amount of budget that we're required to attempt to put the maple tree on life support for a few more years could be much more efficiently and successfully deployed, preserving and improving the health of our shade tree canopy all over town. We have to move on. And finally, I don't want what happened on my street to happen to the town common. We had a street full of aging trees that all were roughly the same age and all declined at the same time. As a result, I now live on a dead end street where many of the trees were moved at the same time and more are soon to follow. Our poor street is going to look bare for a generation. I believe the tree warden when he says we need to pursue a tree canopy that is buried in age to avoid the same scenario. I've planted dozens of trees in my yard. When I moved in, it truly hurt me to do so, but I removed two ancient maple trees that flanked my house on the front. They were gorgeous, but their time had passed. They were unsafe being in such close proximity to the people that I love. I'm equally sad that it's time to do that here. And those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I agree with what you said, Bennett. I'm feeling that because there were so many people who came and spoke up in favor of saving this tree, that as chair, my, my vote on this would be to, to not make a decision to, I, I can't vote to remove the tree and I understand why it needs to be removed. So um, you didn't exactly make a proposal, did you, Bennett? No, so I'm gonna propose that we take a neutral stance on this. Any comments on that from the committee? I have a vote. <laughs> what did you say? I, I have a vote that I'm planning to make. <laughs> well, we well, need a proposal <laughs> to vote on. So okay. I, I propose that we um, vote. Does anyone second? Vote well, on what, Shoshana? Like on the Mary Maple, on chain selling the Mary Maple. <laughs> You're proposing to remove it? No, no, I'm, I'm proposing that we talk about, like we vote on whether or not we recommend to like a yes or no vote. Not a neutral vote is what you're saying. Right, like an actual vote. Okay, so do you wanna make a proposal to save it or, or to remove it? I propose that we do not take it down at this time. Okay. Can I just add something here? Yep. So the tree is for three trees, uh, which you need to include in your your vote. Okay. We can't. We're not doing each one at a time. I thought we were going to do each one separately. Well, you can make a motion that would include all three, so it's one motion. If you want to do three separate motions, that's fine too. I think three separate is good. Okay, so we're talking about the Merry Maple right now. Right. And your vote is to save the tree, your proposal. Correct. Okay. That is correct. So I, I tend to agree that we should have, I, I actually am in favor of a vote uh, being one way or the other and not neutral, just because I feel it's our, it feels like it's our, our responsibility to make a choice either way. Um, okay. So the proposal now is that we vote to save the Mary I, Maple. I also, who's speaking? I'm sorry, can you guys hear me? Helen, is that you speaking? Keep... We can barely hear you. This, hey. this is Ellen. I have to keep turning my camera off. It may yes. help if others do it. 
it, it does seem slightly better since you turned your camera off. Try again, Is Ellen. this better if I turn my camera off? Yes. yes. That's better. Yes. Sorry, I'm running off of my phone. I, I still don't have electricity or internet. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm wondering about the, to save the tree. I think that's a little misleading. Um, maybe vote not to remove it immediately, or I, I don't know. Um, I just, I would be worried in public perception of say what we're promising if we vote to save the tree. And maybe I'm getting into semantics here. No, I agree. That yeah. sounds appropriate. We don't want to give any false hope or, or any sort of um, excitement on what our powers actually are, you know. <laughs> Okay, so proposal for just the Merry Maple that we vote to not allow it to be removed. Yes, all, that is my proposal. All in favor. And <laughs> you'll have to turn your camera on. Yeah. So raise hands is the easiest way, and we don't have to worry about the sound quality. So one in favor, all opposed. <laughs> and abstentions. Ellen, I don't think you voted. I wasn't clear on what, <laughs> what okay. I was voting we're on. Voting, we're voting on Shoshana's proposal that we do not, we vote to oppose the removal of the Merry Maple. Okay. So I'll do once again, all in favor of not okay. removing the Merry Maple. Okay, all opposed and abstentions. So two opposed, three abstentions, and one four. All right, uh, let's try the opposite. And I'm going to put all three together in the interest of time. I vote that we accept the removal of all three trees. I propose that. All in favor? Well, that, yeah, it does not work the same way. Well, we'll see. So. Three people are voting in favor of removing all three trees, accepting the removal of all three trees. Yes? I'll try it again. All in favor of allowing, uh, of accepting the removal of the three trees. All in favor? Three. All opposed? And abstentions? Okay. So that's our vote. Uh, sorry, there was. Uh, one other question that we don't really have time for and one other um, hand raised, but um, at this point, uh, we'll close the meeting, the hearing, unless Alan has any final comments. I just will say that um, thank you for, for you know, co-hosting this meeting and, and you know, the hard work you put into to this decision. It's, it's not an easy one. Um, and unfortunately in a situation like this, there are no, you know, no one's a winner, you know, really. So, um, but um, you know, if anybody has more comments and want to submit more questions, they can send it to myself at treewarden at amherstma.gov. Uh, you can send it to the Shade Tree Committee. Um, and uh, you know, all that information will be included to uh, the town manager who will be making the decision now as far as um, whether or not the tree would be removed. So. Um, Okay, and there's a question, what is the best way to, for people to learn of the official determination? Um, I'm pretty sure there'll be a public announcement made at, uh, relatively soon. I don't think um, the town manager is gonna, you know, sit on this very long. I think he's gonna move pretty quickly um, in, in his decision, so. Okay. Um, well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate all the comments. Um, it's a difficult topic. Uh, this question is still pouring in, but we do have to end our time here. So uh, with some thanks and uh, yeah, more information will come from the committee and please post on our Facebook uh, page or write us emails and we will respond. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thank committee you, everyone. Members. Thank you. I'll be closing the tree hearing at yes. uh, 604. Okay. Thank you.